Hey guys, it's Maya again at Roots and Refuge Farm. Uh, welcome back. Today is Monday, and today we're starting something new. Uh, it's either I can't remember whose idea it was. I'm pretty sure it was Jessica's. It might have been my idea. I don't remember. It doesn't really matter because we're a team. Teamwork makes a dream work. Anyways, we had this great idea that we would uh, choose a day, and that day would be kind of dedicated to me posting and talking about uh, not just like what I'm doing or projects, because it'll be definitely be an avenue to update you on projects and stuff, but to also start sharing on some of the stuff I'm using tool-wise, uh, homesteading hacks and different things that I've learned over the years of doing homesteading, and not just homesteading, but carpentry and kind of a you know, fix it all kind of person. But through the process of just learning and learning from different people who are way more experienced than me, you know, I picked up some stuff. And then honestly, getting into homesteading, it was just a completely new echelon of, <laughs> oh my goodness, pigs. I'm hanging out with the pigs, I'll explain that in a minute. Getting into homesteading, it was more than just uh, carpentry. There is obviously a lot of carpentry that goes into this, but I've had, listen. Go sing him the song of your people somewhere else. What was I saying? So be, going beyond carpentry, I had to learn a ton of other stuff. Uh, never never had built a fence. I had never driven a truck with a trailer before. Uh, we bought this homestead. Never operated a piece of equipment. Uh, no tractors, no uh, four-wheeler. I've never been on a four-wheeler before. And I'm not making any of this up. Like, this is just stuff that I hadn't done. I was, you know, mostly raised in the city. When I did live in the country as a kid, we didn't have money for any of this stuff. So I didn't get to do any of that. So getting into a five acre homestead, you know, I had to learn how to drive trucks with trailers with weight on it, uh, operate machinery, build fences, um, not just that, but then getting into like uh, building coops and stuff. You're working with different kinds of wire, chicken wire, hardware cloth, all this stuff. This was all new stuff. So we're gonna take Mondays. We're gonna call it Mondays with Maya. I'm gonna share my experiences with homesteading, things that I've learned uh, that work, things that I've done that haven't worked, and you know this would also could be a great opportunity to just even uh, learn more i'm sure there are people in comments when they see that i've done something you know a lot of the time i'll get comments saying hey you could do this this way and it would be more efficient and so i do appreciate that and so this is just going to be like a hey this is what i'm doing this is what i've learned so on today's episode of mondays with maya we're going to be talking about the pigs um, the reason we're talking about the pigs because in uh, working with the pigs and what we're having to do right now, I've been having to build some fences and I'm going to share you guys, I'm going to share with you guys uh, some of the tools and the hacks that I've learned along the way that make our fences better and make it easier to, to get stretched and get it tight and, and, and installed properly. So here's the ladies and they are so close within a few weeks, not like super close, but they're close enough. There's Gerard. Anyways, the ladies' uh, pigs are pretty close to having their piglets. So with them being closer, we are having to jump their uh, renovations to their space to the top of the list, which is fine. It was pretty high on the list already. But because of that, we've been working on the fences. And that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today as far as like uh, how I stretch my fences and put them up and uh, what kind of uh, tools I'm using that I think will help you guys out. You know, you think, oh, this is just a, you know, common uh, solution that everyone thinks of. And honestly, sometimes I've learned that it's not. I'll tell you the truth, I've, I've watched uh, some homesteaders that we watch. And, you know, there's some, in my mind, common sense tools that they're just now adding to their homestead. And I'm thinking like, you know, we got that on day one. But it just goes to show that not everyone goes through the same process. And so everything's unique. And so I'm going to share my unique experience. So this run of fence is brand new. All right, and you can see it's going straight down. There's the watering hole right there. And there's the uh, end of the fence. This runs into a gate for the tractor access, which will then run down to where the pigs are now. All right, so me and Ben were working on this this week and got most of it done, but we've actually had to take down some old fence to put up some new fence that's better. And so that's also taking up a lot more time, but it's also giving me a good opportunity to show you a before and after and give you a comparison of not just the fencing fabrics, but then some of the tricks and hacks and tools that I use to make this awesome. Uh, once we get the fences all done and we've got insulators to run the hot wire across this whole big section of uh, pig area, we've also are going to be building a new pig house and we're going to be doing it in 
like we're gonna kind of do it like a long barn kind of like the goats barns but shorter and then we're gonna divide it in two and set up two isolation pins for each mom because I don't know what kind of mothers they're gonna be I don't know what kind of father Gerard's gonna be and I'm not taking any chances and so we're gonna go ahead and isolate the moms once we know that they're going to have the piglet so it's just the mom and the babies um, with no other external factors and then once they get big enough and we feel comfortable we'll probably let them out and then the same depending on how Gerard behaves which I don't know he's kind of a loose cannon you know he may we may let him out uh, where he's gonna be once the piglets are big enough and we feel like we can trust him uh, let me show you where I'm gonna be building the uh, pig housing so this is where they are currently right in between these two trees right here I'm gonna build the pig house and then I'll do all the hog, I'll do all the hog panel uh, pins with uh, separated in the middle and all that and so I was hoping to get to this framing uh, this weekend and I did not actually uh, Ben turn uh, pulled his back out on Saturday early in the day and so he's uh, at, been at home resting for a few days I just had a back injury so I can completely understand and so I basically was like you know what go home and get better and when you're better let's get back on it because of that though I wasn't quite able to get done everything I wanted to get done but we'll get it done and I have a feeling we'll get it done before uh, we have a bunch of other pigs running around. All right, let's talk about fabric real quick. When I say fabric, I'm talking about the actual fencing material itself, the wire that becomes the fence. That's normally referred to as fencing fabric. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it is. So there's two kinds of fabric that I know of that you use on the homestead. There may be others, but from our local feed stores and from my experience with building stuff, these are the options. The first one is woven wire, which is expensive. And that's what you've seen us put up all the new fence and this like this right here let me get a close-up of it we see it's got the red top and see how the squares uh, basically what that means is that woven means that things are woven together so it flexes and moves all right there's no welding involved this is woven wire and this this is the old stuff this is what's called welded wire. You'll see it's got a two inch by four inch square. And basically why it's called welded wire is that at each of these joints, uh, they tack it together. And so it's heated up and, and welded together. Okay. On woven wire, you're going to pay more money. Um, for a 330 foot roll, you're going to spend $230. That's at our local tractor supply. And for a hundred foot roll of welded wire, you're going to spend like 60 bucks at our tractor supply so it's actually cheaper and you can buy it in less quantities um the woven wire which the other thing is is that woven wire comes in uh different patterns you have a field fence which has like a six by six square uh goat and sheep which is a four by four square when i say by four by four the squares are four inches squared uh they also have horse fence which is about a uh, foot taller and it's a two by four woven fence um, and I'm, they may have some other configurations. Um, we almost always go with sheep and goat, um, no matter what we're really doing, because it works for pretty much everything. It's a pretty much all around. Now field fence can work, but with goats on the field fences, a lot of times they can stick their heads through that six inch uh, square a lot easier than these four inch squares. And so we have not liked that. And honestly, we we'll probably would never use it um, on our homestead. You're gonna pay more for the woven wire, but let me just show you a comparison on, uh, what what you're gonna get for your money okay so look down this fence and just look at how it looks this is a woven wire fence you can see you know it looks really tight it looks really good now that is because we just stretched this we just replaced this section of fence with uh what was here before was welded wire because when we first got into homesteading i didn't know any better and i was trying to save money and bought welded wire for pretty much everything that we were doing and it was a huge mistake um this is the reason why i believe it's a huge mistake this is four years of welded wire fence if you'll look at it okay here we go okay look close see how bent up it is it's falling off right here Right here's just been pushed down. Okay, it's just loose. Okay, so what happens with welded wire is that you have animals pressing up against it. You have dogs trying to jump over it. Uh, and it's also um, not galvanized as good as woven wire. 
And so what ends up happening is that the little uh, welds break. And when the welds start breaking, it literally just shreds and comes apart and becomes not just not a fence, but it just becomes a hassle because it's just all these loose wires entangled everywhere. And it's not really good for anything at that point. And every place where we've put welded wire, it's coming apart. It's getting busted through by animals. It's not It's not working for a fence. Um, the only place that it's lasted any decent amount of time is the chicken yard. Uh, the pig yard is pretty much getting uh, woven wire all the way around and then a hot wire along the bottom to keep them from rooting up against it and pressing up against it and breaking it down. Because I'll be honest, even as strong as the woven wire fence is, those pigs could probably still take it down. The only run of fence that will not be woven wire in the pig yard is this run of chain link, but it'll also have a hot wire on it. And so it shouldn't be a problem. Another thing about fencing is that you've got to have something to secure the fence to. Um, and that's not, I'm not talking about the T-posts. The T-posts go in between uh, what are your braces. Now, I call them H-braces, but essentially they're just braces. They're braces where you nail the fence to and you stretch it to the next brace and uh, secure it. And that's what holds your fence tight. And then you use the T-posts in between to keep it standing up. There are many ways you can do braces. Uh, there's not one right way or wrong way. Uh, essentially, as long as it's holding the fence and you can stretch off of it and you can get a lot of tension on it, then it's going to work good for you. I actually have a multiple different configurations right here um, just because I've had to try different things. I've had to fix things that have broken. And so I've had to be creative on uh, my bracing, but I will say this uh, on working on some of the new fence stuff that we've done, I have found a method that as long as you can secure the resources that I really like. Okay, so this was an H brace. It kind of looks like the H brace down there, which I'll show you in a second. But I actually broke it with the track hoe when I was back here clearing. And so what I ended up doing was taking the center beam that I had and digging a small hole and wedging it in there and securing the top with a lag bolt, right? Now what I did is that we nailed to this part and we stretched that way, which means that the fence was being pulled this way and that's why the brace is actually keeping the pressure on the ground and not on the base of the post. And so this actually configuration stretched very good. Um, it didn't really pull at all. It didn't really bend at all. A lot of times you wanna make sure you have some kind of bracing going in the direction of the tension because if you don't, the pole can snap or you'll just pull it straight up out of the ground. That particular post, I did concrete in. I have since learned that you don't have to concrete posts in, especially if you get them deep enough, you can backfill them with gravel or honestly, you can just fill them with dirt and eventually uh, the rain and stuff will settle in and it'll get a lot tighter. Now this is one of the first H braces I ever built. Now it's called an H brace because obviously it looks like an H and then it's got these tension wires that run across the middle with these tensioners and that essentially tensions everything together so the pressure is on or at least it was on that post to right here but we actually bypassed this H brace because we put this new gate in so that is my new way of building fences which I absolutely love and what this is is an old telephone pole dug about two feet down and then it's uh, braced with a four inch rounded fence post that I got from Tractor Supply and it's braced down to the ground and honestly that's how we've done all of our new fencing. All the fencing in the front, all the fencing for the pig yard and I'm telling you I don't have to use concrete and that's as, as strong of a brace as I've ever made. The other thing is is that telephone poles are built to last especially with ground contact and so those fencing posts are going to be here for a very long time and they're not going to fall apart and break. All right, so we've talked about fabric, bracing, and your T-post. Well, let's talk about the different tools that I use uh, for getting fence stretched. Some of the stuff I'm gonna talk about is probably gonna be very obvious, but I feel like some of the stuff might not be quite as obvious. Uh, and so hopefully it is helpful to somebody who's getting into this, um, getting started, like I can give you enough information to at least get you in the right direction and y'all can figure it out from there. The first thing you're gonna do after you get your H braces in is you're going to run a line in between your two braces. Uh, you're gonna run a line of string and then you're gonna mark off uh, eight feet or 10 feet gaps. Um, so basically you're gonna come off of your, uh, your H brace or your bracing uh, eight feet 
if you're gonna do eight feet or 10 feet, if you're gonna do 10 and you're gonna mark it and drop a T post and you're gonna go 10 feet from that one and drop another one. And you're gonna line out however many T posts uh, you need to span that gap. This is a five foot T post. Once you get them lined out, you're gonna use a T post driver. Slides over the top like this, okay? Line up where your T post wants, where you need your T post to go. And then she gets up. Okay, and that will drive the T post all the way down. I'm bringing this up because uh, this to me was like a day one purchase. I have since learned that there are people who actually uh, did not know about a T-post driver and were driving their T-posts with uh, sledgehammers, which is doable, but it's definitely not efficient. This is a tool specifically made for putting T-posts down into the ground and it's very effective. Now you have to be really careful with it because if you come up too high and you catch the T-post like I've done, as you can see, see that little notch right there? That's because I've gone up too high and came down. And essentially what that does is it acts as an anchor point, bam. And then this comes onto your head like this. And I've almost knocked myself out uh, with the T-post driver. So th uh, that's fair warning. Um, but as far as putting T-posts uh, up for fencing, no, this is a this is a huge game changer. You're gonna need uh, obviously a hammer. What you're gonna use to secure the fence is called the fencing staple. And essentially, it wraps around the fence like that. Hammer them in. You can get those at pretty much any uh, feed store or hardware store. Once you get one side nailed up, you're gonna stretch it to the other side. Now, how I stretch uh, our fence is that I'll I've used a tractor, I've used uh, a pickup truck as an anchor point. Uh, I've used trees. I've used uh, other H braces that were already finished. Um, essentially you need to find another anchor point and you're gonna have to find a way to secure something to the fence to be able to pull on it. Now, I use an actual fence stretcher and the reason why is because it gives an even pull all the way up and down the fence and it pulls the whole thing all at the same time. If you were to use just like hooks or you know, ratcheting straps and, uh, and run one strap to the top and to the bottom, what's gonna happen is as you're starting to tension the whole fence, the two points of contact are gonna get real tight while the middle is just gonna be loose and your fence isn't gonna look very good and it's not gonna be as tight as it could be and honestly, it's not gonna last as long. And so here's the stretcher I use. I actually got it from uh, Tractor Supply and essentially it comes in a few parts. It's a, it's a two by four with this metal uh, beam that goes across the front and it's got holes, four holes uh, drilled in it where these bolts fit through. And how it works is you line the holes up, this comes off, this goes on the back side of your fence, this goes on the front side, you line your holes up, it drops down and then you tighten everything and then this and this compress together and, and tighten the fence down. Now, once you get to that point, you've got these, which is a U bolt nut on the other end. So you've got your stretcher secured to your fence. On this hole right here, this U is gonna go just like that. Okay, just hand tighten it. All right, it's gonna have one at the top, one at the bottom, and then you're, this is where you're gonna pull from. Uh, you know, you're gonna be pulling from two different separate locations and that kind of lets you adjust uh, the top and the bottom uh, tightness and tension uh, depending on uh, terrain or whatever it honestly depends on just what's going on sometimes that uh, you'll stretch it and the top needs to be more tight than the bottom because it's going up a hill or down a hill or different things got your uh, point of contact on then I use two come alongs this is a come along got two anchor points one here one here this one is adjustable so if I was to release it here, I could pull this out and make this go longer. What I like to do is I hook this end to my stretcher like this, and then I'll hook this end to a point of contact on the tractor, and then you essentially crank it down. Now you'll do this on two different, uh, I put a come along on both the top uh, point of contact and the bottom. And that, like, like I said, that's how you adjust the tension uh, independently and kind of fine tune the fence. So you got everything up, your T-posts are in, your fencing is up, and you've got to now secure it to your T-posts. And this is where one of the really cool uh, hacks comes in. I found this tool at Tractor Supply, and honestly, I'm a big uh, supporter of it. 
Um, you know, I'm not sponsored by anybody for this video. Like, I'm not, like, none of these brands uh, owe me anything, do I, nor do I own them anything. But this is just a lot of the stuff that I use, which is a T-clip bender at Tractor Supply. And I'm going to give you guys a quick demonstration of how this particular tool works because this is going to be too hard to explain um, without just showing you how it goes. Okay. This is a T-clip. Honestly, in case you didn't know, anytime that you buy T-posts, they have to give you free T-clips. Uh, ask. A lot of times you have to ask. Um, but essentially, for every five T-posts they give you, or for every five T-posts you purchase, you're supposed to get a bag of free T-clips to go with it. So make sure you guys are getting your T-clips whenever you buy your T-posts. Now, I've seen people put these on with lineman's pliers before and they're pretty fast but I still think this is probably the fastest way to get this done all right so on the end of that lever as a hole just like see that hole right there all right so on the little hook of the t-clip which is this piece right here okay that's what that's for let me show you how that works so I'm gonna slide the end into the hole and then I'm just gonna pull back and push forward and it sounds weird because I'm saying pull back and push forward but that's really the motion you go through now once you get used to it um to me it's a lot faster than using needle nose or lineman's pliers or anything like that uh and you know you do a lot of t-clipping whenever you're uh, building fencing and doing homesteading so this is ten dollars i would highly recommend that i also keep uh, three kinds of pliers out for doing this this one is essentially a puller you can hook on to something if you need if you're taking fence down like we have been doing uh you can use these to get it hooked on the uh, on the staple and be able to pull it out. It's also good at cutting. Uh, needle nose, just for fine tuning stuff. Sometimes you need needle nose, uh, just because anytime you're working with wire, it's always good to have these. And these are what's called lineman's pliers. Uh, these are my primary cutters. Um, one of the other things I use uh, for all fence building is I keep an impact with a 3 8 uh, socket attachment and my socket set because uh, adjusting, uh, tightening, and loosening the bolts on the stretcher is way faster, especially when you're doing it by yourself. With a socket, you can just reverse and forward instead of having to uh, crank it by hand. All right, so last little hack I've got is with these lineman pliers. And I learned this off of a YouTube video like six years ago when I first started uh, fencing. So sometimes when you're stretching fence, especially uh, on terrain like ours where it's uh, graded and it's high and lower and you've got bumps and hills, a lot of times sometimes your sometimes your fence will not tighten up and look real tight like it's supposed to. And so what I learned from this video is that you can take a pair of pliers. I use lineman pliers. It doesn't have to be, but this is so far is the most effective. And you can twist different parts of the wire itself and it will take tension out all the way down the line uh, and that you can use that method to tighten up fences especially over uh, varying terrains let me show you what I'm talking about see so like right here I'm a little loose if you can see there's the line that's hanging off a little a little slack um, and it's actually the main line so what I can do is I can set my lineman's pliers up and just twist down a little bit and twist and what that's gonna do is that as I'm taking off just that little bit of slack now you can go down let's say you know there was a, a run the second run needed to be tightened up kind of like right there you know I can twist twist you can also do it for vertical okay so you see that weird little pattern right there? And what each one of these little kinks will do is it will pull and it will pull and tighten all the runs down the line and it literally will tighten up the whole fence. And there's been times when things were not really going my way on the fence building that I had to use a ton of this little kink method just to get the fence to tighten up right to be able to be attached to the T-post and for it to look uh, like it was a new fence. And so uh, I thought that would be something that you guys might find useful and interesting. Hold on, I actually did forget one thing. Um, I almost forgot it because I didn't have to use it this trip, but I've used it a ton. Um, sometimes uh, when you're running uh, fencing, you'll run out of one roll 
and you'll need about 10 or 15, 20 more feet. Or if you're doing a really long run, you've got to splice the two runs together. What I've learned to do on splicing is use this really cool tool. It's called a wire tool. And I got it also from Tractor Supply. I think it's five bucks. And I've used this a, a ton. Uh, this has been such a useful tool. It's got three different holes, which is for different gauges of wire. Um, and essentially what you do, I wanna show you guys how this works real quick. And I'm just gonna do a quick splice on this piece of scrap wire from the fencing that we've been putting up. So you'd wanna line your pieces up. Let's say I'm gonna try to splice these two. And what I try to do is go line to line like this. And so then take that this way, like this. Okay, now I'm just gonna start spinning this. Okay, see how it made that nice spiral right there? And essentially, that's not coming apart no matter what. So this little guy has helped me make uh, fence splicing, uh, any kind of wire where you're needing to bend wire around something like I highly recommend this little five dollar tool I've got four or five of them around here just in case I lose one. I use it all the time Almost sorry. I almost forgot it really love this thing. That's all I've got for fencing That seems like an awful lot of boring information um, I really feel bad for Jessica if she ends up having to edit this because I feel like I just dumped a ton of information um, maybe got a little rambly So Jessica if you're watching this, I'm sorry and if I'm editing it well, then I'm sorry to myself anyways guys uh, That's my uh, spiel on Fencing uh, the things that I've learned um, The methods that I use I'm sorry that I didn't have more time to show you uh, Me doing this stuff but I've learned that me in the process of trying to do it and talk about it that the video just gets really 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 blown up and long like to include any footage of me actually doing most of the fencing stuff and then try to talk about it the way that I feel like I need to to give you all the information I just felt like that would be too long of a video so I will include some footage of us actually finishing up the fencing in an upcoming vlog but uh as far as the uh this is you know this is the information dump for maya's fencing so i thank you guys for sticking around i hope you guys got something that you can use and that will help make it easier building fences for you guys i bless you until next time